You know, we're here today on one of the most important obligations that New York City police officers and citizens of this great state has, to make sure the people are safe. And the reason we're here today is to make sure the unjust, and we believe illegal release, of a cop killer doesn't happen. We're here because this parole board did not do their job, did not go by their own rules. And we're here to stand before this judge and say, you cannot allow this to happen. When we pointed out their mistakes, the parole board tried to conceal those mistakes, which means they meant to do it. When you look at the transcripts from that parole hearing, you have parole commissioners acting as if this cold-blooded killer was a hero, like he was a folk hero, and he's not. Cold-blooded killer, ambushed two New York City police officers, killed one instantly, shot the second hero police officer, Joseph Piagentini, 22 times. That's no mistake. It's planned. It's not political. He's a terrorist, and we cannot allow terrorists to walk our streets. So today we go before this judge to say, stop this illegal, unjust release from prison. Some evil can never be taken out of a human being. But we're here to argue to say, this parole board didn't even do their jobs and go by their own rules. So we're saying stop it, allow another parole board to hear it, and make sure they look at all the evidence. They'll also have the audacity to argue here that Mrs. Piagentini doesn't have standing in this case. Absurd. Who else has more standing than the widow of a hero police officer killed by these murdering mutts? Had to rear her two daughters by herself, become the mother and father in all things good. If anyone has standing, this hero woman has standing, who doesn't have standing to allow this mutt to walk our streets, is that parole board who are violating the law and violating their own procedures. So we respectfully come here today to say stop, take a look, use your own rules, look at all the evidence, and if you do that, this mutt will not walk our city, state, countries streets in freedom. It's my honor, as it's an honor of all police officers and law enforcement across this country, to introduce someone that we hold sacred, the widow of police officer Piagentini, Diane Piagentini. Patty has basically said it all. I'm here to, uh, to see that justice has been done and needs to be done. We have Herman Bell, who was an educated person back in 1971, which uh, some people don't seem to take that in effect. They think that he got all of his education while he was in prison. That is not so. We're here to see that um, a new parole board will be put into place with new commissioners, and that uh, Herman Bell will be kept in prison. Thank you. Question. Pat, when you say uh, the parole board did not do a job, specifically from a legal argument, what are you arguing? They did not take into consideration the victim's impact statement, the statements of the killer himself, the fact that he is not remorseful, the fact that that parole board practically told this mutt, you have to change your words in order to get out. We're talking about a killer who in 2016 wouldn't help with evidence that he had in another cop killing case. And he told in the most vulgar ways our detectives to take a hike. That's not remorseful. Basically, the commissioners said, you won't get out by saying this, but you'll get out if you say that. That can't stand. First things is we have to stop this. Second, these parole commissioners need to be fired. And third, there needs to be an investigation of why it happened. Sir, um, the extenuating circumstances with this parole board that you have concerns about, if they weren't there, 
would you then allow that kind of parole or is just not a chance for parole on the situation? When you're going in parole, you need to look at the case, the victims that were left behind, the viciousness of that case, and other criteria. The problem we're having is they didn't look at these criteria. Look at the criteria and make a decision. So if they looked at all the criteria, they would not have come to this conclusion. We're not saying violate the rules. We're saying go by the rules, all the rules. Yeah. Do you expect to get a decision today? That's up to the judge. Uh, it's not that we're looking for a quick decision. We're looking for a right and just decision. Can you tell us uh, why you don't believe that he is a changed man? In 2016, he was asked to help in another cop killing case. If he believes that I've done wrong to help in that case, in no uncertain term, in the most vulgar way, told our tech detectives to take a hike. You've changed in two years, after 40 years of never saying it's wrong, and then when you read the transcripts, you realize that the parole commissioners were feeding the responses they needed to hear. That's absolutely wrong. We're, all we ever ask for when we come into a courthouse like this is fairness. And then the decision should be based on the evidence and that fairness. Fairness for everyone. Unfortunately, there was no fairness in this. You think any cop killer should ever be granted parole? If you're killing a New York City police officer or law enforcement across this country, you're a certain type of evil. But we're not talking about a young kid that made a mistake here. We're talking about a cold-blooded killer that planned the killings, participated in other killings. Someone that said, my job is to overthrow our government and the form you see on the street of our government in all communities are police officers. So this killer should never be out in the streets, period. If they'll kill a police officer, they will kill anyone. I want to thank you all for covering this most important issue. I also want to thank the court officers, the sheriff's department, the Albany Police Department that's here to protect us while we're here. And we also ask them, be careful. There's a cop killer in our building. His comrades were here this morning. They don't change. So while we thank the law enforcement that's here to protect this family and all that walk these streets, we ask to make sure you protect yourself too. There's a cop killer upstairs. When you say his comrades were here this morning, can you tell us who you're referring to? There were BLA members here, Black Panthers here this morning, protesting for his release. That's a dangerous thing. Not that they're protesting, but who they are and what they believe. They were here. I'm not sure we can get that number for you. What's your name, sir? Patrick J. Lynch, president of the New York City Patrolman's Benevolent Association. Thank you, everyone. All the best. Be careful.